Okay, what, do you have a king game? Yeah. Okay, so we'll just do it this way. I'm going to read out of here. This is an ESV, I believe, which is a modern translation from the early 1900s, which is an English revised version. Yeah. So what we're going to look at here is that when I read the King James, all things have become new. This is what the statement I want to work on today. Um, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. But I want to read it out of here, and I'll read the ESV first because it'll, it'll stop you. The good news thing, all things have become new. All things have become new. Look at your Bible. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, all things have become new, right? You read that, I read that. That is someone's translation. And, of course, if you have a King James Bible, the King James from the early 1600s to the 1700s has been revised several times. Which means that if you picked up an original, like I have seen them in the um, National Archives in the United States, in the National Archives, I, I couldn't read it. I picked it up, and, and I don't speak that English. It is, you know, like woke. What's a woke? <laughs> There's words, we don't know them anymore. But they revise it, revise it, and of course, when translators translate, and I, I've done this, I translated for three and a half years the New Testament. Uh, every, every word in the New Testament, 137,903 words, 903 words in the New Testament. And the real reason I know that is because I counted them. I translated for three and a half years so that we could make a, a, a translation into Latin, and I had to have a common ground literally. So when I was translating, I come across certain things, and some of these things are going to point out to you today, okay? If any man be in Christ, everybody knows that phrase. That means you're what? You're saved. You got born again. You're saved. So we know the different terms of that. But I want you to notice this statement here. I'm going to read it out of here first. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Then it says, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, if you read it like that, it's like the new has come. It sounds like, well, something is not all things. I'm going to read it out of the other side of my, my Greek text, okay? And it says this, so that is conclusion. So then, because something has happened, there's other um, information going on in this context that he's trying to explain to these people. And he says, so then, if anyone in Christ, and he says, kaina katesis. Kaina is one of the Greek words for Time words for create and new. So if I say um, netos, it means a new in time. And if I say kainos, it's new in quality. We don't usually switch the word. When we say new, we can mean either one in our language. But here he uses the phrase kainos, meaning that in singular tense, this one is in new quality. This one, who is the new creation, is in a new quality. Now, I don't know about you, but I got saved on August 28th at about 4.30 in the afternoon. And uh, it was uh, August, and I got saved on the back porch of my house. I never went to church. So I got a gospel track. I got saved on the back porch of my house. And when I got saved, I didn't have any idea what had happened. I, had, I, had, I didn't have one godly thought in my mind. I didn't have one godly thought anywhere in me at that moment other than Jesus said you can be saved. And I called out and he did it. On the inside, that track gave me the information by which I could take the information and act on it. That's like today. I'm going to give you information like a pastor and I want you to act on it. I want you to think. We, we take time and we focus on it and then we act on it. Act. Remember said you spent long and James has said, he that keeps on peering into the law of liberty means he sits there and focuses on it. The law of liberty is the truth. And if you keep on focusing on it, it will grow you. It will change things in you. Now, but I want you to notice this. He says, so that if anyone is in Christ, a recently new quality creation, literally that's what it would be, a new quality creation. Now, he's not specifying 80%, 20%, 100%. He's not qualified, did he? Did you say what percent is the new creation? You see the plan? Because we know that we are a human being, right? Are there things that you still like, don't like about yourself? Anybody don't like anything about it? Everybody doing this, I think people are being shy with me today. There are things, even after being saved for over 40 years, I still don't like about myself. And tomorrow I'm going to get rid of a few more, and I'm going to gain a few more insights on how to get rid of them and these kind of things. But he says this, interesting, he says, so that if anyone in Christ, a new quality creation, the things of the old have passed by. 
literally, you know, hurrah, elephant means it's passed you by. In other words, they're not there anymore. That's what he's trying to get across. Passed away, he's, they passed you by. And then it says this, when he gets going, it says, and behold, how many have the word behold? Do you have the word behold? Behold, that is narrative. Okay, that means when someone wrote this, like if you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you see behold, or you do in Greek, behold, pay attention to what it's trying to say. Sometimes it's not that Jesus said behold, it's the, the, the guy who wrote it put behold. So you've got to be careful when you read through it, the behold, because it might have been narrative trying to get your attention. Now behold, I'm going to write something else that I want you to pay attention. Jesus said verily, verily, many times, right? John's gospel, there's duplicates of it. Verily, verily, the works that I do, you shall do, right? Well, he said it. But there are places where the, the scriber, the person who wrote that book, actually added it to get your and my attention. This is one of these cases. You could say it this way. So then if anyone in Christ, a recently new creation quality person, the old things have passed you by, behold now, here's the thought. In other words, pay attention. Whenever you get, you do. It means pay attention. This is what Brother the moment understand. This is error's command. Error's command is a command to right now put your head on, put your heart on. Right now, we know that. Me and him have conversations so I can, you know, spread some of my charm on them. <laughs> if I command you get up. That means, in this command, it means do it right now. That's why Pastor said there's things you need to act on. If it says in, in another sense, we have another phrase in Greek called the present imperative, which means whenever the situation comes along, do it then. If you hurt your brother, forgive him then. If your brother hurts you, forgive him then. It could be present tense of command. Now, in English, we don't do that much. We don't. You, you miss the, the things beneath the surface. Now, he says, so then if anyone in Christ, a quality new creation, the things of the old have passed you by, behold now, it has become new. And he uses the phrase, kind of, but it's plural. The things isn't there. So if you have things that become new, all things that become new, what he's saying, new qualities, plural, new qualities. So the, the born-again man, the new creation man, has new qualities. You as a Christian, the day that you receive Jesus, you are now having new qualities. The thing is, we need to find out what they are. We need to find out what passed away. That's why if any man be in Christ, there are new qualities. There are new qualities for every Christian. Now, I don't know about you. I got saved from the back porch, went in the house. I'm just as ugly in the mirror the day next day. You understand what I'm saying? My ugly face, my, my appearance in the mirror did not change. Though so I look in the mirror of the Word, it shows me what I can look like. But I look at what I am looking at. We all do this. You and I have to take what we look like and then see when God shows us who we are and then take that image and replace that image. And this is what these new news, literally in English, you would say news. The new qualities. You have new qualities. Now, you want to get a peek at a couple of them? Yes. Okay, go over with them. I'll just give you one example of this because sometimes we don't understand. If you go over to 2 Timothy with me, if you would please, in 2 Timothy, notice in the first chapter of 2 Timothy, he tells you something that you do not have and something that you do have. 2 Timothy, first chapter, notice down here with me in this, I'll explain it, the seventh verse, okay? 2 Timothy, first chapter, seventh verse. It's an explanation. For God has not given us, what's it say? The spirit of fear. Literally, in, in this language, in English, we have different rules when we try to put things in understanding. First, the word uh, spirit isn't the word new, it's the word dailyus. Dailyus means he did not give you a cowardly spirit. None of you are a coward. Now, you may look in the mirror and say, coward, but when you look at the word here, he said, not coward. This is what I mean. What does it take to get you to not be a coward when you see yourself as a coward? You have to stop thinking. You have to stop thinking some way and let God choose what is thought for you. This is the place where we have to go to the Word and let the Word bring understanding and conviction so that we stay, okay, like you're saying, not healed. How many of you have ever been sick since you were saved? 
How many of you have ever, you don't really know. How many of you have ever sinned since you've been saved? I got five toes here, five toes here, and if I can raise them up, I'll give you how many times that's happened. But the thing is, you're a new creation, and there's new qualities, but yet you're still doing something. We are something that we did before. Why? Notice, for God is not given. Not given. There are things that God has given to you. He's going to describe what those qualities are if we look at his word. Not given to us. The, and look at there's no article there. If I were to say, he has not given us a spirit of a coward. The spirit of a coward. That is making, if you knew somebody who was a coward, this is good this. If I knew somebody who was a coward, I'm not him. But if I have not a spirit quality of a coward, that means I have not any of those characteristics that cowardly people have. Can we see what he's trying to show? Whenever you switch the article to no article in this line beneath your Greek, between here and under the English text, what it says is different things by the words that are used. You are a new creation, recently new quality creation. Number two, that being true, there are qualities, spiritual qualities that God says you have that you did not have before. And there's a reason for them. Now notice this, seventh verse. For God has not given us a quality of, 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 a, of uh, a coward, okay, of a spirit of fear, the quality, well, that they kind of work together. If you're a coward, you're very fearful. Let me put it that way. The coward fearfulness, you could put it that way. But, and I see the word but, now he's going to say to you what he did give you and me. So now you can get up in the morning and say, this is who I am. This is one of the qualities that I have today. First, number one, you look in the mirror. If you see coward, you see spirit of fear, you have to say you're a liar. You have to say to yourself, I am not that. How difficult is that for some people? Great big mocking sometimes. But this is what has to happen for us, and I'm going to explain why. This is what has to happen, because we do remember what we used to be. When I got up the next morning in 1980, I remembered everything it was the day before. I just had something in there that wasn't the same as the yesterday. He says here, for God has not given us, let me read this straight, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power. Say, I have power. I have power. We all like that one, right? No, he doesn't say what percentage, where at. You see, you've got to go look for the other places that tell you where the power is. Notice here, and of love, so now you have love. Something happened in the new birth where you have love, and of love. What's your Bible say? Okay, so what you had before was not a sound mind. What you have now is a sound mind. One of the qualities that you got receiving Jesus is something happened in your mind. This is something we need to understand. If he gave you a new mind, would you have that quality? If he says you have new qualities? Now, I'm going to show you there are distinct differences how the word mind works. Because noose. And the, the verb neo is meaning the ability to think. When we use the word mind, we're talking about a function. We're not talking about a place. The noun like faith. I talked to you about this the other day. When you say, I have faith, you're talking about a noun. If you say, I believe, you're talking about a verb. Same word. Faith and belief are the exact same word. One is just showing you what the action of it looks like. The other is telling you it's a subject matter. I have faith in God. I believe. I'm believing. I believe. I am believing. And the tense of the verb tells you what you're doing. Now, I want you to notice something here. He gave you power. He says you have, right? He gave you power. So that's some of the qualities that if you're in Christ, some of those qualities are. He gave you no fear. You're not a coward. If you still have any quality that seems like that, I'll explain why you have it. Because if he says you have this and you don't know you have this, then that has to be what you start working on tomorrow morning. I do not have fear. I do not have a spirit within me that has qualities of a coward. What do cowards do? They run. They hide. Now, if he tells you to stop lying, which he does, then you can't say I'm a coward. I, I, 
I have fear. What you have to do is say, I am something else, which then will eventually will catch up with you, and you will stop fearing in your action. Now, sound mind. He uses this phrase in the, in the Bible. We have sozo frizz, and that means to say sos frizzo. That verb meaning sound to view. Sound view. Sozo is the Greek word for say. Sos is the root of it, means sound or safe. If I have a safe view, a sound view, how did you get one? Has anybody understand what I'm saying? You see, if you have a sound mind, that means, like for example, the man that had the demons, and Jesus cast out the demons, and the next thing it says, he was there, dressed right in, in his right mind. Same word, exact same word. So it's a frame. He's in a sound mind. What does that mean? He thinks right. Now, when the demon was in there, he thought wrong. The question is, what's the answer? Now, go over with me, if you would, to 2 Corinthians. We have power. We have love. And we have the ability to see things right. Is what that really means. I have an ability to see it right. Do you see everything right yet? Probably not. Just like me. We don't see everything right yet. It means you can, though. I have noticed that, you know, when people see it right, they're full of the Word of God. If I have someone that doesn't see it right, I ask them, do you know this chapter? No. Do you know that? No. They don't see it yet because they've not seen what it says. Now, I want you to notice, this is an interesting verse I ran into the other day. I thought you might be interested in this one. Second Corinthians, Paul is preaching. He's saying that, you know, the things that were written in the Old Testament were given him enlightenment. And so he starts talking about the things that he said that people were becoming. People were becoming epistles. People's hearts were being written in. People were becoming something by the word. And then he goes on to say this. And notice this statement up here in the fifth verse. This is 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. You see that in your Bible? Now I want you to think about that. Here, I just give you an idea that God gave you power, God gave you love, and God gave you the ability to see it right. He gave you the ability to see it right. Wise-minded, sound-minded, it is a saved view. You have the capacity inside of you to see it right. Now, notice what this says. Not that we have or are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. But our, what's it say? Sufficient. Okay, so, he cannot see it's enough. Literally, it's enough. So, it's not enough for us to think of ourselves. It's not enough for you or me to think something of ourselves. So that means we have to direct our thinking where? This is the part that we need to understand. We have to direct our part because it says he, God, is sufficient. He's enough for us to think anything. Now, of course, we can go deeper here, and I can tell you that the word noose is not the word standing there for the word think. It is the word dialogos, and dialogos is a word that means your pattern of thinking. We're not sufficient of ourselves to have a pattern of thinking. We use the thought reasoning in English. We're not sufficient of ourselves to have a set reasoning of ourselves. In other words, we're in trouble if we keep thinking the way you thought before. Yet he said you're capable of having a new view. You and me. What time do I have to stop it, by the way? You're going to fly me down? It's 11.20. What time do you know that sound? 12 ish? 12.20. Okay, I'll, I'll try it. I don't have a clock ahead of me, so I'll, I'll work at 12. You flag me if I get 10 to 12, okay? What time do you normally go home? Okay, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll get down. My, my watch says 11.20, so I'll stop at 11.45. I'll give you 15 more minutes, okay? Here we go. Say, I, I even born again, I'm not sufficient to think anything of myself. Now, that seems like a villain, doesn't it? 
I have a sound mind, I, I, I'm, I'm able to have a sound view. I'm able to have a sound view because you have power, you have love, and a sound mind, right? If you are able to not be a coward, does that mean that you're not one right now? You see, you may have it, but you may not be understanding it. You may not be yielding to that uncowardly spirit. You may not be yielded to it yet. But it is, the truth is still the truth. I am a person of love. Right? If you're a person of love, have you ever not walked in love? Okay, so that means there is some possibilities for you to do what he says and not to do what he says, right? But the point is, it says in the Word of God that he gave you power, he gave you the, the love that you have, and he gave you the ability to view things sound. But here he goes on and he tells you and me that we are not of ourselves able to view anything of ourselves. Literally, not reason anything of ourselves. So that tells you it means something. Wherever we start in Christianity, we have to direct our focus on what God said to replace what we already know. You have to direct your attention to what God said to replace what you already know. Can we understand? Yeah. Now notice again, not that we, and he's making a statement because we have such trust through Christ to God. And we're not sufficient of ourselves to think that God did this. God gave us the ability to be this, have this, because Jesus paid the price for us. We saw him, he's on the cross, right? He died and he was raised for us. Now notice again, not that we are sufficient or enough. It's not enough for you to think of yourself. However you think, wherever we think, we have this rule. God is the only way that you can know where you're thinking right. God is the only way you're going to know whether you're thinking right. So if I have that sufficiency in God to think right or build patterns of thought, that's what reasoning is. You're building a pattern of thought. You know, you're pulling down strongholds, that statement, same Greek word. Logos, the logos, a fixed pattern of thinking. We tear down and we build up. The strong Christian, the stable Christian, has built things in them where they now have set patterns of thinking. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. I am redeemed. I am delivered. I am set free. I am the greater ones in me. I have all these things. I can do all things. We build these into us. How do we do it? That's what we need to find out. Now, I want you to notice here. God is your and my sufficiency to reason everything. So if he's the only way that you're going to be sufficient, that would be to say God is the only one who has the content you can think. Can you grasp that? If you're born again, you're a new creation, new qualities, and one of them is power and love and the ability to see things or do things rightly. That means you don't see like you used to see immediately. I didn't understand it, but I saw things I've never seen before when I got born again. Something in here switched. Dead, alive, dark, light. It turned out and I started to see things I've never seen before. This is telling you that the content has to be changed. Now, go over with me. We want to go over to First Corinthians. There's so many, I mean, there's so many good things we can talk about here, but I'll try and keep it to another 15 minutes. First Corinthians, second chapter. First Corinthians is going to tell you how we think. Now, it may not be the only way you think, but there are ways. In other words, if you were to look in the past, how the devil and you in the devil's kingdom, how he controlled you, then you will start to see how you used to think. And you'll find out something. Notice this here. This is talking about, um, quoting Isaiah 64, when he was saying, the world did not know what God was doing. And praise God, they did not. Because if the world would have known what God was doing, they would have not let Jesus go anywhere near that thing we call a cross. They never let him get anywhere near those nails. They never let him get anywhere where he could say, forsaken, forsaken. They didn't never let him do that. Because if they knew what was going on when he raised from the dead, it broke all the ties. Broke the ties of things that we don't even understand how deep those ties go. But I want to notice this thing here. Notice the statement, and he's explaining this. First Corinthians second chapter. He's explaining why they did not know. First, God didn't tell anybody. 
He hid it. God is good at hiding things. Just pick up your Bible. Like I said, there's 137,903 words of the New Testament. And there are a lot of words around those, in those, that not all the words. I mean, the devil talks in the Bible. Uh, Paul said, I give my own opinion in the Bible. But when God talks, it's clear. You look, who's speaking, who is he speaking to, and what is he speaking? Notice, but as it is written, the eye has not seen. And there's hard negatives here. In Greek, there's soft negatives and hard negatives, which means there's absolute no's and possible no's. This is an absolute no, which he said, no one with eyes saw this. Number two, and neither the ear heard. And literally sounds, and no one saw heard this. No one's ears heard this, because he hid them things. He did not want them to know what he was doing when he did it. And it says, neither, and again, that's strong negative, and not one have entered into the heart of man what are the things that he's talking about. Things which God has prepared for the death of the Lord, right? So nobody saw it. God knew it. God is the one that revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul says when you read, you don't understand. Because what you have now to read is what he wants you to understand. The content is there. You are a new creation, new qualities. And you have to find out what new qualities. Well, one, you have love. Number two, you have power. Number three, you have the ability to see things differently. The other person, they don't. I want you to notice this again. He starts to explain this about how we as a human being understand. He asked the question, you understand. God did not tell anybody. Nobody saw someone saying it. No one heard someone say it. It did not come upon the heart, no come up from the heart. Literally, the word anabino means it did not come up. Now think about that. Remember uh, Psalm 45 where it says, my heart is bubbling up good, good words. My heart is bubbling up good words. Why? Someone put something in there. You see, it won't come up. That's what he's trying to point out. The inward man can trap things in there. You know, it took me a long time to learn, you know, speaking different languages. It didn't take me nothing to learn speaking tongues. It just came and I have it. But languages you have to learn. Principles you have to learn. Qualities and ideas you have to learn. They are a learnable thing. Now I want you to notice this. But as it is written, I have not seen, absolutely did not see, nor the ear heard, neither have entered upon the heart, which means it came from your ears and your eyes and rested upon the heart. And then it says this, it came back up. Now here's a principle that God is trying to tell you. Epi is the word upon. So if the eyes and the ears let things around us from a natural point of view get inside of you. When they're in there, they come back up. Upon the heart, they don't descend back out of your heart. You remember what the 10th chapter of Matthew said? Jesus said, how can you be evil speak good things? He said, for out of the abundance of the evil heart comes up evil things. And out of the abundance of the good heart comes up good things. Some things have to get in your heart. No, look at this. It says, But as it is written, I have not seen or ears or neither entered or upon the heart and ascended back out the things which God had prepared for them to in. But, now listen closely, but God has revealed, past as they're revealed, by and to us by his spirit. What did he reveal? The truth. Where is the truth? Point at the truth. Right here in your hand if you have a Bible. Then it says, for the Spirit searches all things. For he's the, the mediator of the truth you get. For he is called the Spirit of truth. He is the mediator of truth. And he knows each line in your heart that has to be filled up for you to go to the next line. That's why we need to be led by the Spirit. We need to be listening to the Spirit. Because He knows what's next line is where you need to go. Are you listening? Notice again. For the Spirit searches all things. That's referring to God's things. Yes, the deep things of God. Now, He's going to go and make an explanation about man. Remember? Eyes didn't see. Ears didn't hear. Did not come upon the heart. Did not come back out of the heart. 
The eyes didn't see, the ears didn't hear, didn't come upon the heart, didn't come back out of the heart. That they telling you a flow chart. He's giving you a flow chart how to develop spiritually. What your eye sees, what your ear hears, will get upon your heart, and it can come back out of your heart. Notice this thing, and he's explaining. For what man knows the things of a man? Literally, it's plural. The word man is men. How many of you have a plural word there for man? No? It's plural and great. I'll say it this way. We'll do it this way. Because I... Okay. I got enough time to tell you this verse a little bit. Now, you can tell me, yeah, slow down, you're going too fast. I get, I get excited about the word. I don't know about you guys. I get a little excited, you know. Sometimes my wife, you know, I come, she come, you know, I, I don't work. I go preach and I go at home and I read the Bible, study the Bible, and for eight hours a day. That's what I do all day long, study the Bible. That's what I've always done for the last 30 some years. Read the Bible, study the Bible, you know, go out and share what God puts in my heart. So that's what I do. Now notice this. I'll read it out of here. 2 Corinthians, first, excuse me, 1 Corinthians, 2nd chapter, and this. I'm going to read this 11th verse, okay? The Spirit of God searches all the things of God. That would be sent there to tell you that if he searches things prior, he knows them, but he searches them. Why? Why would you even have to say the Spirit is searching things? Because each individual that's trying to learn something is not in the same place. So he may search things different for me as he would for you. You have to let him search. In other words, you ever read, you ever read your Bible and one verse comes alive? Yes. Well, that verse is what you're supposed to spend time with. Amen. Well, I tried, I tried, I saw this earlier. I want to read about the anointing. I want to read about, but I, nothing, no light turned on because it wasn't what God wanted me to learn in my process of line of line. Notice here, he's going to ask a question. For anyone or who has known of man, for who has known of mankind, literally, of man plural, Listen, I'll go slow. For who has known? Oidemen in, Oidemen in this language means who has seen and still sees. It could be who has perceived and still perceives. It's perfect tense. You got a glimpse of something. You ever had a glimpse of something? Then, oh, I don't know what that was. That's not this. This means you have seen it, you have perceived it, and it's still residing inside of you. That's what we all want to get. Now notice what he says. He says, who for who has seen and knows still of men the things of the man? So whose things are these things then? Whose things is he talking about? Who of man has seen the things of a man? So he's still talking about God and he's still talking about man, right? For the things of man. So in this context, he's talking about the things of man and the things of God. Can you see that? Notice, for who has seen or perceived that the things of man? Then he says, the things of the man. In other words, he specifically wants you to look at, now we're going to talk about man's things. What and how does a man really know? Notice, for who has seen or perceived and still sees and knows of man, the things of, of the man, then you say, except, right? Is amen. Except the spirit of the man, the one in him. He now he's talking about your spirit. What does a man know? What does a man see and remains knowing and seeing? The things of the man is in the spirit of the man. Now here's where we need to understand. If you know what you knew, but yet God says you're not capable of your own self to think the thoughts of you. Why do you think he tells us to replace what we think? Hello, are you listening to me? Because there are things, I'll, I'll say it again, I'll read it slow. For who has seen and knows of men, that is of mankind, the things of the man, who has seen it, who knows it, basically, except the spirit of the man. So, the things of God, who knows the things of God? Well, technically speaking, he's called the spirit of truth. But the spirit of truth job is to lead you, guide you into all truth. So it's not meant to be and stay with God. It's meant to come from God into you. 
Now, by this verse, the things of man, tell me if I'm wrong with it, just look okay. at The things of man, that means man's things, who knows the things of man? He says, the man's things are known by the spirit of the one in him. That is the spirit of man that's in him. He knows those things. For example, how many of you really have to think to drive your car? Now, some of you have damaging driving skills, I know. But how many of you just get in your car and go, oh, man, how do I turn it on? Oh, oh, uh, where's the brake? No, some, some may do that with a clutch and a, you know, a manual transmission. You know, I grew up with one, so I, I can still go back and engage in that. That's saying, what does a man know but the spirit of man in him knows? What does the spirit of man know in the spirit of man? Things of man. If the man knows the spirit and the spirit that is man knows the things of man, where do you know something? In your spirit. Why would you think that there's a pulling down and replacing of things you think? Because it's got in your heart. It's got in your spirit. That's why you have to replace. That's why you're not sufficient of yourself to know anything. But praise God, he is our sufficiency. Why? He gave you a hundred, at least in the New Testament, 137,903 words to replace whatever amount of words. No, some women have more words than other women. Some men have more words than, than other men. My wife, I can call them, brother the will tell you, my wife, her ears are hanging down here. Her, her hair is back. Because when I come, I come home, I'm ready to share. <laughs> usually, it's, it's usually the guy comes home from work and the woman's ready to share. You know, as an average, not always, but the average the woman has more words than the man, like three to one. So if, if, if you have a quiet woman, that's a talent. She's learned how to concern what she's going to say. Now, any of you women, can you say that? That's with me. I'm the talker. No, you're all looking at me like I fell out of the tree. So maybe your husband is the talk. Yes, maybe. Okay, we'll just say there's something to be spoken on. Well, I can say this. When you have human knowledge by that verse, where is it? It's in your spirit. I don't have to think. I don't have to. And we will explain it away a million different ways. I have muscle memory. Well, I'm telling you. My heart beats without well, even me trying. But I can go and I can defy what turns on automatically by my choice. How do I know to do that? It's like when I get a hiccup. You ever had a hiccup? You're hiccuping and I take a drink of water and I still breathe for 10 seconds. I just control my solar plexus or my diaphragm and the hiccup has to stop. I've learned something how to control my hiccups. My wife said it don't work. She did it. It worked. Why? Because all it is, you're out of rhythm with your breathing. You ate too fast. You swallowed too fast. You got a big, you know, some people drink a big amount of water. My wife can suck down water faster than anybody I know. If I give her a drink, I buy two because she cannot drink me. I don't know, like I said. What am I talking about in this verse? The spirit of man knows things. The spirit of man knows things. Does it say the spirit of man doesn't know these things? No, it does. It says the spirit of man knows things. But what happened to the spirit of man? The nature of sin got in here. So now he's dark. He's destroyed in the sense he's a sinful knowing man. So when the spirit of man becomes born again, now he can see things. But you still know yesterday. You still know the day before. And if you were a power the day before, that residual knowing is still in you. And God says we have to replace it. We're not sufficient of ourselves. I'm not sufficient to think anything of my own origin. So you're a new creation. You're born again in spirit filled. What does that mean? Even as a born again person, you're not sufficient to know everything of yourselves from your own spirit. You have to take what God has and put it in there. Replacing the thought for thought. Because he uses the word logos here. What's I'm saying? Now logos comes from the Greek word, the verb lego. Lego means to lay down a pattern of words. 
let go. I'm laying down a pattern. It emphasizes the content of the word. When I say Lagos, in the beginning was the Lagos. Everything God wanted completely from end to beginning, he put in Christ to bring it to us. That's why he's not called the Rhema, he's called the Lagos. Because everything laid down was in him that he wanted to tell us. Now, yes, he did speak. He used his mouth. But he said that when he came, he was the light and the light was in him. So he had what God wanted him to say in him. We have recorded what he said. But then he also recorded, you know, 2 Timothy, where he says he didn't give you the spirit of power. He, did, he gave you power. He gave you love. And he gave you the ability to see, have a sound view. Having ability to sound view is a new quality. Are you listening to me? Yes. Are you sure? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, old thing passed away. That doesn't mean there's nothing old in you. I just told you something. You see, if the spirit of man knows the things of man, and one day later you still know the things of man, right or wrong, they're still in there. You listen to me. Right or wrong, they're still in there until you say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to think this way anymore. I'm not going to have that as a principle in my heart. There is now the talent because he said you have a quality to see it soundly. That's why if I'm preaching right now, you're going to say, that don't make sense. I, I, that's not what the word says. Or yeah. That's exactly what does a man of mankind know the things of a man except the spirit that is in him. Where is that? It's here. Then the spirit within you knows things, knows human things. Well, if you got born again today, like I did on the back part of my house, and one second after you receive Jesus, and now you have the quality to see something sound, what's still in them? This is what we've not had explained to us. We do not know that there's a new quality. You just see it different. Here, I'll show you another way. Go over with me real quick over to 2 Corinthians again. Is it too much, too fast, too soon? I got two minutes. Notice if you were in 2 Corinthians, there's a similar statement here. We'll use this illustration from the Old Testament, but it's a good illustration. Notice this statement. We have the ability to think. We have the ability to view things, have a view. So if I'm thinking something, does that mean it's sound, even though I'm capable of being sound? Doesn't necessarily. Can I be cranky today as if I was cranky yesterday? Can I be mean today if I was mean yesterday? Yes, you see what I'm saying? Why God said don't be this way, don't do that, don't lie? Because why would he tell you to do something that's not possible? Because it's still functional. If you got in and you learned how to drive a car, you learned how to speak English, that English is inside of your spirit. I listened to you. There is something we need to grasp here. There is still residualness inside of your human spirit. What was there yesterday or how many years ago? Now, my wife will say something. I thought, I don't know that person. I'm redeemed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm reconciled away. I'm set free. I'm delivered from the authority. I'm redeemed from the curse. I'm set free from the one who had the might of death. All of these greater as he is in me, I make him alive. Why? Because I don't see myself less than that anymore. So I don't know who I used to be. People call me on the phone from 40 so years ago and they say, I remember you. And they start talking. I'm thinking, what? I don't remember that guy. Because now I've switched and I've taken anything out of me about that guy and I don't remember it anymore. It's not front. Man says out of the abundance. Out of the abundance. What does abundance mean to anybody? Out of the abundance means when you fill up a glass, glass, pour it, and the abundance is what floats off the top. What you have deep in your heart may not be the first thing that comes up. It's what's on top. If you were upset about something, guess what comes up? The upset is what's on the top of your heart. This is how this works. Now, I want you to look at here. Notice what he says here. So we have the ability to think. We have the ability to know things in our spirit. The spirit of man. The inward part of man knows things. Now, ideas that when we get born again, now 
Uh, one of the qualities that we receive is our inner man can see things clearly now. How I many notice that immediately? I did. Mean, I didn't know what it was that was happening, but I knew it was true. Notice his statement. This is 2 Corinthians. This is the third chapter. Notice what he's saying. 15 first. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, what is Moses? Even on this day, when Moses is read, what is Moses? The law, the prophets, and the Psalms. The Old Testament is divided in three portions. The law, which is Moses, the prophets, and Psalms. The New Testament is divided into four sections. Gospels, Acts, Epistles, and Revelation. So all together, there are seven portions of the Bible. When they preach, uh, it's not in Moses or the prophets. You'll see he quotes it. Jesus did quite often. It's, if you don't know what the law, remember the rich man and Lazarus, he said if they don't hear Moses, they don't hear the law. And the prophets, they're not going to hear something coming out from the dead. In other words, we do stick to what we understand. Now notice. But even unto this day when Moses, which is a book, by the way, is read, the veil is upon the what? What's a veil doing? It doesn't let you see something. It covers something. The veil's on their heart. The veil's on their heart. And we're new creations. And notice what it says. But even on this day when Moses is read, which is a book that has words, the veil is by their heart. Nevertheless, when it, their heart shall turn to the Lord, the veil will be taken away. The ability to see right. The veil is taken away, you see right. That doesn't mean you know everything to be seen. That doesn't mean you know anything. You know that something's different. If you go up one verse, notice the statement in the 14th verse. But their minds were what? They were blinded. And phrase here, noimata is the plural word for thoughts. Their thoughts were blinded. Where was the veil? Their thoughts were blinded because they're heart was blinded. Where were they thinking of? If their heart was blinded, their thoughts were blinded, where were they thinking of? Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, the evil man speaks evil, produces evil. How can you say good things when there's nothing? He's talking about you can't talk right if you're not born again. Your inward man is deceived. It has darkness. But when the light comes in, now you can see things and you can see different. The inward man, then you can start the process, which if I have a chance someday, we'll come back and talk about it, called renewing, the renewing process. If any man be in Christ, we'll have to stop there with this. If any man be in Christ, any person who's received Jesus and now is in the body, is in Christ, is born again, you say, he has the state of a new creation, a newly state creation, and new qualities. Your inward man has new qualities. One of them is love. One of them is power. And one of them is the ability to see for nesmas or for frizo, where we're talking about the inward man can view different. How are we going to view tomorrow if we don't pay attention to how we view today? Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word. I praise you and thank you, Father God. I praise you and thank you, Father God, that we are born again. We are creatures of your power. We are creatures of new qualities, of the ability to see it differently because our inner man can see being unveiled. Father, I pray for us today that you will reveal to it, that you will move us to spend longer times meditating so that the inward man can see what they do see and then eliminate what is bad and replace with the good that we may be vessels of honor unto every good work. I thank you, Father God, so much in Jesus' mighty name.